And welcome everybody to another edition of the Brody File. Super Tuesday week, Tuesday has passed, and Donald Trump, what do you want me to say? Do you want, the big winner, he's the big winner. I mean, look at these states, Tennessee, Arkansas, I mean, how many, Georgia, uh, uh, Virginia, Massachusetts, Vermont, did I say Tennessee? Who knows, there's so many, so many, he won seven altogether. Ted Cruz won three. Marco Rubio actually won a state. He won one, the state of Minnesota. And so what does it all mean exactly? My goodness, uh, Donald Trump clearly on his way to becoming the Republican nominee. Can he be stopped? Well, yeah, he can be stopped, but it's the same old thing people have been saying for a while. The only thing that's going to stop Donald Trump is Donald Trump. In other words, an implosion moment needs to happen for Donald Trump. I'm not sure it's going to happen based on the fact that, uh, look, it's close. He smells it. He tastes it. I can't imagine a, a smart businessman like Donald Trump is going to blow it at the finish line, but you never know. Here is Donald Trump post Super Tuesday. We're going to make America great again, folks. We're going to make it great again. And, you know, I watched Hillary's speech and she's talking about wages have been poor and everything's poor and everything's doing badly, but we're going to make it. She's been there for so long. I mean, if she hasn't straightened it out by now, she's not going to straighten it out in the next four years. It's just going to become worse and worse. She wants to make America whole again. And I'm trying to figure out what is that all about? Make America great again is going to be much better than making America whole again. Now, look, as for Ted Cruz, uh, Super Tuesday was supposed to be the big day. I mean, he was the guy that was supposed to win seven, eight, nine states. Well, he didn't do that. Instead, it was three. But then again, three is better than zero, right? Tomorrow morning, we have a choice. So long as the field remains divided, Donald Trump's path to the nomination remains more likely. And that would be a disaster for Republicans, for conservatives, and for the nation. And after tonight, we have seen that our campaign is the only campaign that has beaten, that can beat, and that will beat Donald Trump. Well, as for Marco Rubio, another pretty much a third place finish. He won one state. That's it. Minnesota. But he's going to carry on because he wants to fight in Florida. March 15th, his home state, a state he desperately needs to win. We will not allow the party of Lincoln and Reagan to fall into the hands of a con artist. We will not allow the next president of the United States to be a socialist like Bernie Sanders. And we will not allow the next president of the United States to be someone under FBI investigation like Hillary Clinton. Well, so what does it all mean? You know what it's time for, a Brody File commentary. Well, he's done it again. The brash billionaire with New York values had a banner night on Super Tuesday, and there's no doubt that the Trump train is not being powered by gas or electricity or solar power. Instead, evangelicals are the energy behind this locomotive. You know, winning in the, in the South has always been important to the fortunes of a GOP presidential candidate. So Trump's victories in Tennessee and in Georgia, Alabama, Arkansas, Virginia, they're significant. But it's even more noteworthy because he did it by securing the evangelical vote yet again, just like he did in South Carolina. If you look at the exit polls, it shows that he's doing it by appealing to middle class, blue collar evangelicals. They love their country. They love God. In essence, many of them are former Reagan Democrats. They're conservative, but aren't necessarily folks who always tow the GOP line. Look, the fact that a billionaire like Donald Trump can appeal to the regular guy, folks, that's an intangible that every candidate would love to have, and Trump has it in spades. You know, he was always expected to grab more of the non-evangelical vote, but when you're actually winning both evangelicals and non-evangelicals, game, set, match. As for what's next for Trump, well, look, he's going to not need to obviously try and finish off Marco Rubio in Florida, and then he's going to have to fight off John Kasich in Ohio. Plus, he'll need to maneuver whatever the GOP establishment folks are going to throw at him in the next two weeks. So, Obviously, there are potholes ahead, but it's going to be awfully hard to beat Trump at this point unless, as we said earlier, he implodes right before our eyes. And of course, plenty of Republican establishment types have been hoping for that moment ever since day one when he rode down that gold escalator. And time and time again, they thought they had him sunk, 
but it never happened. And with Trump so close to putting this nomination away, like I said before, I really don't see it happening at this point. The GOP bigwigs want to blame Trump for running the GOP or for, I should say, ruining the GOP. But look, they really should blame themselves. They never took Trump seriously and they let him build his silent majority. They had plenty of chances to try and take him out earlier and they blew it. All right, now time for Hillary Clinton. She is right now blowing Bernie Sanders away. I don't think there's any question about it. She did very well on Super Tuesday. She is on her way, over a thousand delegates now. She's on her way to the nomination. Uh, Bernie Sanders is gonna stick around, but Hillary is feeling good. It might be unusual, as I've said before, for a presidential candidate to say this, but I'm going to keep saying it. I believe what we need in America today is more love and kindness. Because you know what? You know what? It works. Instead of building walls, we're going to break down barriers and build... build ladders of opportunity and empowerment so every American can live up to his or her potential because then and only then can America live up to its full potential. Hillary Clinton feeling good and oh by the way it's time for I know this is going to shock everybody but a double Brody file commentary. Hey, it's Super Tuesday, so we're thinking big. We're, we're super. We got two commentaries. Hillary Clinton, we know she's on her way. Bernie Sanders is going to stick around. I don't think there's any question about it. Look, the fact that a 74-year-old socialist has over 400 delegates in the Democrat Party is not only uh, amazing to a degree, it says a lot. It says a lot about Hillary Clinton that she can't put Bernie Sanders away. It says a lot about the Democrat Party that Democrats would actually be okay with a 74-year-old socialist. Uh, but also it says something about Hillary Clinton because she has over a thousand delegates. And what does that mean? It means that Democrats want to win in November and they think realistically she is the ticket. And so I think I don't think there's any question about it. She's going to be the ticket. It's probably going to be her versus Donald Trump. And boy, is that going to be a cage match? Uh, the only issue will be how will they be able to have Trump on stage? Will they have to have Hillary Skype in from jail? How would that? I'm just kidding. But that indictment definitely looms over her head, so we'll see what happens. All right, when the Brody Files show, show <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, rolls on, Saeed Abedini back on the homeland and back with an exclusive interview right here, back in a moment. And welcome back, everybody, to the Brody Filer. I take a quick break from politics uh, to talk about Saeed Abedini. Of course, he's the pastor jailed in Iran, now freed, back on the homeland. Uh, it's a wonderful story uh, in the sense that he's now obviously uh, free after preaching uh, the gospel uh, and basically being in prison for preaching the gospel. Uh, Abigail Robertson had a chance to catch up with Saeed Abedini in this exclusive interview. Have a look. I felt in my spirit that some threat is going to come in. That feeling came during Pastor Saeed Abedini's 10th arrest in Iran. I know that maybe they're going to kill us because I turned from Islam to Christianity. But Holy Spirit was with me and uh, He encouraged me, prepared me for all this suffering I, I, I should go through. Saeed used this time reaching out and ministering to those around him. Tens of the prisoners were there turned to Christ the first year. So the prison found it out, the intelligent police found it out, they took me to another prison where the situation was worse. In every place that they changed my, you know, my prison, it was a good time to evangelize, to see a new people and evangelize to them, which made them so angry. But preaching God's word came with consequences. Every people who became Christian with me, they start torturing them, separate me uh, from them. And the last two years, they made uh, me completely isolated. Was there ever a time when you were over there where you didn't know if you would make it back to America? You know, the first six months, they always threatened me to death. And they said, for, for sure, you're going to be executed for what you did. You made thousand Muslim Christian. But every time that I prayed, you know, Holy Spirit put in my heart, 
no, still I have some work to do for you. After three and a half years, Pastor Saeed Abedini has finally returned home to what he says is a very different America than the one he left. It seems that they found out that something should be changed. There is something wrong. I believe that uh, God wants to bring revival back to America. Thankful to be home, Saeed still faces challenges adjusting to life back in Idaho with his wife and children. My marriage actually it's not in a good position right now and I need people who prayed for me to continue. But Saeed remains hopeful. I knew that uh, I'm gonna go to this suffering because of my faith and I knew that uh, God is using this opportunity to that the gospel be preached. So I always encourage myself that the things I'm going into it's not uh, um, actually useless, it's not for nothing, and good thing is coming out from it. I'm Abigail Robertson, reporting for The Brody File. Wonderful to see Pastor Abedini home, safe, and secure. All right, coming next, live action. It's a group that's not playing around when it comes to the life issue. They've got some abortion procedure videos that are going viral across the country. A talk with their founder when we come back. Welcome back, everybody, to The Brody File. All right, time now to talk about, obviously, the very serious, sensitive topic of abortion. The pro-life community making waves in 2016. We're going to have more on that in a moment. There is a huge campaign going on when it comes to specifically looking at what happens during an abortion procedure. Live action, responsible for this campaign. Take a look. My name is Dr. Anthony Levitino. I'm a practicing obstetrician gynecologist and I've performed over 1,200 abortions. Today I'm going to describe a first trimester surgical abortion called suction DNC, dilatation and curatage. This is the most frequently performed abortion and is used typically from 5 to 13 weeks of pregnancy. After administering anesthesia, the abortionist uses a speculum like this. And joining us now, the head, the CEO, the, the mover and shaker of Live Action, Lila Rose. Lila, good to Hi, see you. Hi, David. Good to see you, too. Uh, an important campaign. Tell me about the genesis of it. How did this uh, come to fruition, and what's going on? There's been a lot of movement with this. Well, over the years, working with Live Action and the pro-life movement, I talked to people, what convinced you? What changed your mind about abortion? And it's always having an encounter with the violence, the horror of abortion, really knowing what the abortion procedure is, mm -hmm. and the humanity of the preborn child. So we realized that we needed for the movement actual medical animations proving, showing what happens during each most prevalent abortion procedure. So we put this campaign together and it's narrated and spearheaded by a former abortionist who himself committed 1,200 abortions. So it has that authority to actually show you, the viewer, this is what abortion is and it's changing already thousands of hearts and minds. Tell me about those hearts and minds that it's changing because when you see, we just saw a clip from the video, uh, what are you hoping uh, folks will take away from these videos because it's 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 in your face but it's not gratuitously in right. your face. T tell me a little bit about what you want uh, folks to take away from these videos. Well we wanted to shape them so that they were completely accurate, they're peer-reviewed mm -hmm. and they are just the precise fact of what abortion does to that child at that gestation and already the lead video which was within just five days had over 10 million views on social media and we had you know over 200,000 comments just through, on that one social media feed and many of the comments saying this changed my mind because for the first time that 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 horror of abortion became real to people but it wasn't the gore it wasn't the you know the shock value it was the actual process of what happened to that child so for the first time people actually saw that it's not just a clump of cells it's not just a mass of tissue but this is a human life even mm -hmm. in the first trimester and it deeply moves is deeply moving thousands of people well, that's interesting because with all those, those Planned Parenthood videos that came out those undercover Planned Par Parenthood videos it se seemed like it was an eye-opener for a lot of folks and do you feel like th th this is part of what needs to happen that people's eyes need to be open with the facts specifically because otherwise I mean obviously facts are, are what matter here exactly and that's and that's exactly it because uh, some pollsters say well abortion you know the pro-life pro-choice ratio is largely constant right mm -hmm. opinions don't really change that's not true we see at least through our social media platforms people saying this changed my mind because 
in the hotly contested you know, political rhetoric, it's all about choice and reproductive freedom and you know, a woman's body, you're not actually discussing the fact of what the abortion procedure is and how it's killing a living, moving, growing, vulnerable little child. And people think about the first trimester, they don't realize that by the three and a half weeks, the heart is already beating. Mm -hmm. That, you know, just under a few weeks, there's a, after just three, four weeks, there's already the beginning of the brain is forming. I mean, those facts, and the, you see it, it's it's startling to people, and that's what changes minds. Tell me a little bit about how you're going to roll out these videos. I mean, we've, we've seen what, how, how many have been rolled out, and how how is this going to kind of morph here in the next month or so? Well, we've got uh, four different procedure videos, and then, of course, the story of Dr. Anthony Levitino, who's mm -hmm. a convert to the pro-life cause. I mean, he was an abortionist before. So there's a campaign site, abortionprocedures.com. They're going to be rolled out and promoted through social media and online ad campaigns. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, spend is going to go behind that in coming months and then partners we're already in touch with really hundreds of activists teachers churches other pro-life groups even political campaigns mm -hmm. can't you know not just candidates but folks in office who want this as a tool because this tool has never been available in the pro-life movement before to actually see again what is the abortion procedure at the different stages to have the fact also of how it harms women and narrated again by a former abortionist so it has that authority. Very interesting. You mentioned those candidates. I want to come back <laughs> and talk to you about 2016 and the candidates and this issue. It's a big one. Give us a moment. We're back in a moment. More from Lila Rose and abortionprocedures.com. That's the, Did I get it right? Yes, abortion, absolutely. Amazing. <laughs> abortionprocedures.com. Back in a moment. And welcome back, everybody, to the Brody File. Glad you're with us. Uh, we're here uh, with Lila Rose and uh, Lila from Live Action. Mm -hmm. Lila, uh, before we get into 2016, these presidential candidates, explain to folks who are just joining us uh, mm -hmm. about these videos, this, this abortionprocedures.com initiative that you have going here. Sure. So these videos are groundbreaking for the pro-life movement. Four of the most prevalent abortion procedures legal in this country, medical animations of what actually the child looks like, what happens during the procedure, narrated by a former abortionist and peer reviewed by other former abortionists. This one, Dr. Anthony Levitino, who himself committed 1,200 abortions. Mm -hmm. Extremely powerful, hard to walk, but the watch, but the facts about abortion. And you want these facts, these videos, if you will, to get in the hands of these presidential candidates Absolutely. and their campaign teams. Tell me Absolutely. a little bit about some of the effort in, sure. as it relates so the, to this. Sure. So the videos are going far and wide. The lead video already has 10 million views in less than five days on social media. It's amazing. And they're going to presidential campaigns. They're going to the select committee, the standing committee on the Hill to investigate the abortion industry and Planned Parenthood. They're going to other folks, lawmakers. It's important, all this talk sometimes in campaigns about abortion, Planned Parenthood, what's the fact of abortion? Let's agree on what the fact is. What happens to that child? What does the, the preborn embryo or fetus look like? What happens during the procedure? These are the facts, and we're inserting them into the discussion. So we think the personal impact on individuals and the impact on the political discussion will be huge. So you really do want these presidential candidates to hopefully bring up some of the, some of these videos that, that you have out there Absolutely, now. and encourage those that are campaigning for them to use them as tools to educate. Why do, why do we care so much about abortion? Because it's ending the life of a child. Because it's hurting women. Well, these videos walk you through that in a short, powerful way. Let's use them to recruit more folks to the cause. Take me through a little bit as it relates to presidential politics. We always hear, uh, oh, in the Republican primary, you talk about how you're pro-life and everything, but then in the general election, okay, then it becomes what, this last time we heard war on women, and you have to kind of modify your language a little bit. What is your message to these presidential candidates as it relates to the life issue and why mm -hmm. it's important in a general election that they still talk about this and talk about it in a very forceful Yes. Way. Well, I like what Senator Cruz and Rubio, Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz have done in that they've challenged the opposition on abortion by saying, calling out the extremism from folks like Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, and they've said, look, you know, Sanders, Clinton want abortion up till birth. Mm -hmm. They want abortion anytime. They want abortion to be tax funded. I think those comparisons are very helpful for the candidates to make about their own record and about the other records of those that they might be up against because the voters deserve deserve to know the facts, where candidates stand, and I think it's easy to cover up if you're Clinton. It's either easy to cover up your stance by saying, well, I'm just for women's empowerment and choice. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that really mean? It means that she actually is against, she's actually against a ban on partial birth abortion, so mm -hmm. she's for partial birth abortion, mm -hmm. and she's for taxpayer funding for abortion. Most Americans aren't, aren't okay with that. Right, and on Donald Trump, I mean, you know, I talked to him the other day, and he talked about how he would veto a bill 
uh, that came to his desk mm -hmm. that would defund, defund Planned Parenthood. But he's also talked somewhat in glowing terms, not glowing terms, but he said some things about Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. as well that have been relatively positive. Um, Tell me about the facts, though, because you talked about 3% yeah. of abortion, that they're doing about 3% of their work as abortions. That doesn't seem to necessarily be the figure, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it was sad to see, you know, the presumptive front runner right now for the for the GOP, Donald Trump's it's, it's touting the 3% claim that only few percent of what Planned Parenthood does is abortion, when that's just outright not true. I mean, even the Washington Post, which is abortion-leaning, pro-abortion, mm -hmm. says that that's a three Pinocchios, meaning it's an inaccurate depiction of Planned Parenthood's abortion. They are the biggest abortion chain. Mm -hmm. And even the Washington Post says that maybe up to 40% of their services is abortion. Mm -hmm. Over 320,000 abortions committed at Planned Parenthood every year in this country. It's a huge discrepancy. It's what, a what, huge yeah. discrepancy. So I think that the candidates need to know their facts and they need to know, I mean, how can we call Planned Parenthood this abusive organization, mm -hmm. sex trafficking, sexual abuse cover-up, the selling of baby body parts, Medicaid fraud, how can we call them wonderful? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a that's just a shock to the system. So I think there needs to be more education. The candidates need to make sure that they're educated before they comment. And you're, you're the educator, Lila. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> Department of Pro-Life Education. We're working on it. We're working on it. Lila thanks for being here. Thank you so much, David. All right. We're back in a moment with some final thoughts. And welcome back, everybody, to the Brody File. All right, some final thoughts before we leave you. I guess you can call it a third Brody File commentary. Eh, why not? Uh, look, it's all about Florida and Ohio at this point. John Kasich needs to win Ohio. Marco Rubio needs to win Florida. But Donald Trump is winning in both of those states. If Donald Trump wins Ohio, if Donald Trump wins Florida, good night, nurse. It is officially over. And when I mean officially over, okay, not technically in the sense that he doesn't have the 1,236 delegates to be the nomination. But folks, can I lean into the camera for a moment? Can you catch this? It's officially over. There's no way. Marco Rubio losing his home state, John Kasich losing his home state, they're gone. That would leave Ted Cruz against Donald Trump. Now, a lot of folks will say, well, that means the math will be good for Ted Cruz. I'm not convinced it will at this point. I think this Trump train is leaving the station. The silent majority is speaking, and Donald Trump, like it or not, is captivating a nation. For this week on The Brody File, I'm David Brody. We'll see you next time. God bless. Have a great week.